so we continue our bucket list excursion. This was May 20th, 2019. We are on the Majesty of the Seas on a four-night uh, cruise to Key West and Havana, Cuba. And Manny is still leading us through the streets of Cuba and kind of giving us uh, some history along the way. So we continue. about education because maybe you were reading that education is for free in Cuba and it's pretty good I'm gonna be telling you some details about it and also I mean by the way yes it is it's for free so we don't need to pay for going to primary secondary high school university something that I'm pretty sure in Cuba something that I'm pretty sure in Cuba is that if you would like to study it doesn't matter what you did it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter how old are you so you can do it if you would like to be a doctor if you would like to be a nurse something we call a scalafon and a scalafon is a list and in this list everybody who is in 12th grade our name is going to be written in this list and the order is taking into account the grades that we have the rates that you have imagine that she's the best student in the school every here we are in 12th grade and she's the best so we're i mean she's going to be the number one in this list Imagine that I am the worst student in school, so my name is gonna be in the last number. Imagine that we have just 20 possibilities for being a doctor. My dream was always being a doctor, but also was her dream. So who is gonna be the first one to select the career? She will do it. But imagine that we're gonna be having just 10 possibilities for being doctors. So when it's my turn, the last one I'm gonna be like, I would like to be a doctor. They will say like, we don't have any chance. Oh, okay, so I need to go to the second option. <clears throat> so if they don't have even the second option, I need to go to the third one. For that reason, it's like kind of competition. Everybody's trying to get the best results. So you're gonna be one of the first one, or the first one, to select the career. Imagine that you didn't get it. You didn't get a career, university career. But you love to do maybe things with your hands. So this is one of these places. 18 years old, you're gonna be coming here and they will be doing a two years training. During this two year ter training, they are gonna be combining theory but also practice. The capital has been restored. And do you know who has been restored in the capital? These students. So you will see that they have, they have been doing a pretty, you know, an amazing job. So after these two years, they are gonna be receiving like a kind of diploma, like a kind of degree, and they can go wherever they would like to, and they can show this paper, and they can be working as restorators. They can be connected or not with the government. This is something also that I'm gonna be telling you, the difference between governmental jobs and private jobs. What private jobs has been doing in Cuba? What, why private jobs, they have been changing the present and they, why they are going to be changing the future of Cuba. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know that Cuba is a socialist country. And I think, I mean, it's hard to maybe understand Cuba. So don't worry if you go back home and you didn't get it. I am very, I, am, I don't do it. So I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. So in aspects of maybe government, you will see that we have like, kind of remains of communism. If you analyze Cuba in social aspects, you will clearly see a socialism. But if you think on Cuba in business, you will see like socialism, but like playing with capitalism. It's like, oops. <laughs> you know, like something like that. And private business is one of the things that has been changing everything. Let's keep going. Thank <laughs> you. 
Russia. So there, I mean, this fountain, imagine, this is the original fountain, or maybe a replica of the original fountain that we have here in the, in the square. And they needed to build... And also that one that you see right here, that this one is from 1933. This one, the big building in yellow, or yeah, something like yellow. So it's it was one of the first historic buildings that we have here in town. And nowadays has been housing uh, foreigner investors also. So people can have people have been like buying, no buying, like renting an office inside. <coughs> so something that happened between the two stories and three stories, it was something like that. So those families, they were building the third story, but they were doing something in order to use, not to realize that they were having three, and they were putting the third story a little behind. So being in front of a house, it looks like a two-story house, but if you get like maybe from here, you can see the third one. Uh -huh. So, important to know, this is the only church, the only square that we are going to be walking around and you will see a church in it. If you look around, you will see a church here. Why? Because remember that one of the first buildings that is... If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider giving it a like. That really helps us grow the channel and increase our viewership. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, change that notification icon so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. In San Francisco Square, but you need to get like maybe some rice, maybe some beans, I don't know, maybe some meat. This is the place that you were coming. So you were coming here, it was like kind of, imagine like packed of kiosks where you can get whatever you like to. But the point is that the government, they were also selling the areas around. Uh, when people, they were buying the house, I mean, those buildings, and, uh, those areas and building their homes, they were in disagreement. After, they were in disagreement with the, with, the, with the market. And they asked the government to change it from another place to another place, and they did it. Something that was happening with the square, with this square, is that in 1950, we had like kind of underground parking lot. And it was like almost falling in parts. For that reason, everybody know this square as Plaza Vieja, old square, because it was like pretty bad condition. Even this building you see right here, it didn't exist. So it was completely a replica of the rhythm that we had in this building, I mean in this area. I would like to you to see a photo that is over there. We're gonna be having like a little free time here, so you can walk around, take some photos, take a little break, uh, free. I would like you to see this and you can see how it was the square before and how it was now. At the end, over there you're going to see a statue. Like it's a rooster and a woman is riding a rooster. For sure, if I don't care, Paladar is like talent. 
So it's like taste, because this is the kind of private restaurants that we have in Cuba. So imagine we are a family, and this is a house where we live, and we would like to turn our house into a restaurant. We can do it. So you can go to the government, they can give you like just a permission, yes, please do it. Because we don't have enough places to do it. Of course, they need to pay a tax. So everybody, everybody's winning. So much land all around the country, but the point is motivation. Just imagine my case. I was born about two hours from here. My family was a farmer, so in my, in my home, in my hometown, we have a place where we could go, where we could grow, you know, products. But the point is that incentive that workers, I mean, that no workers, farmers, they have been getting, it's not enough for you to keep doing it. So this is in terms of food, in terms of maybe cooking oil, in terms of maybe toilet paper, I mean, things that we don't, we don't make here in Cuba, we need to import it from other countries. But the point is the supplies that the government has been getting access to. And we need to go to a theme that is going back to, uh, in the history to the 1960s. Do you know what is embargo? Do you know what is embargo? So the US government established an embargo in the 1960s in Cuba. Of different reasons. I, re I remember one of the one of the groups that I had. It was uh, from San Fuegos to La Habana, and one of the clients told me, "But we established embargo in Cuba because you were with Russia and you were putting missiles in Cuba and in the middle of a border coach." I was like, "Oh my goodness!" I was like, "Yes, that's true." So imagine, maybe beating your maybe in your shoes. Maybe I could do this. But guys, we're talking about 1960s. So we are not with Russia, we don't have missiles, and the embargo has been still expecting Cuba. The embargo, the easiest way to understand embargo is that, imagine I am from France, and I produce maybe a pair of glasses, and I sell my pair of glasses all over the world. So imagine what I think on Cuba, what I'm thinking on Cuba, I'm gonna be having two things to put in the balance. To make business with Cuba, I know that if I sell my products to Cuba, I cannot make business with the US in six months later because I'm gonna be receiving like a penalty for doing that. So do you think that I'm gonna be doing business with Cuba where maybe they don't have the money to pay, maybe they need to ask me for a loan, maybe they are gonna be paying me for a very low price or making business with the US. Nobody wants to make business with Cuba. Just think on who is making business with Cuba. Venezuela, you can imagine why. And nowadays you can, you can see how Venezuela is doing. We are pretty worried about that because they have been like, oops, oops, two days good, four days bad, you know, has been like bumpy. We don't know how it's gonna be, you know. We have a lot of hope, but this is maybe the only thing that we have. Let's see how it's going. So in terms of, um, let me see, let me see. China is the other country. I think that China is all over the world. Even if you check in your iPhone, cell phone, you will see. Designed in California, made in China. So China is everywhere, you know. So they, can, they have been making business with Cuba. Some Canadian companies, some Spanish companies, that's it. So we don't have like supplies. It's pretty hard for Cuba to get, you know, products from other countries. This is the aspect. This is the point. Something else important. Maybe you can see the internet one thing and what you're gonna live today is another thing. Don't believe like 100% what you see in the internet. Believe like maybe 25%, maybe 30%. You can see like maybe everybody's starving. Maybe you can see like nobody's free. You can see like nobody's happy. I don't think so. I don't think so. You will see a lot of people happy everywhere. Like everywhere in the world, you will see people that they are in disagreement with the government. This is normal. This is human beings. Even in the side of a house where maybe four people live, one person is going to, I don't want to go to the beach today. We well, need to go. You know, this is normal. This is just humans. But everybody, everybody is doing well. You know, I remember somebody asked me once, are you happy? And I was like, it depends of maybe the meaning that you have for happiness. I took my dad to the highest building that we have here in La Habana. We have a restaurant with the most beautiful view that you can imagine from La Habana. 
name of his restaurant is La Torre, the tower. So he was having dinner with me this day, and I asked him at the end, do you like it? Look at this. And he was like, no. And I was like, come on. And he was like, I am scared of heights. <laughs> so, you know, it depends on your point of view of having it. But I think that most of you are happy. Of course, everybody would like to maybe do, maybe do better, something like that. This is how it's going.